Welcome and thank you for selecting the leadership module. The lesson objectives for this module are that by the end of the module you can explain why good leadership is crucial to success in senior design, list and explain nine characteristics and practices of effective leaders, and create a plan to develop effective leadership characteristics in yourself to help you facilitate a successful senior design project. All right. Let's take a second to ask why good leadership is important to senior design. Please take a few minutes and list as many reasons as you can think of in the text box. Thank you for your answers. The senior design faculty were asked the same question and supplied the following answers. To be successful in senior design, a good leader needs to inspire students to do their jobs, contribute effectively, and bring the project together. They also need to make sure that students in their groups have the right tools, knowledge, and resources to succeed. A good leader also expresses appreciation for what team members do. Students will go above and beyond if they feel that their contributions are valued. A leader is also going to make tough decisions and is capable of assigning tasks. Another important characteristic is that leaders allow team members the flexibility and freedom to complete tasks in their own way. They also make the project a fun challenge instead of a hard problem. And in the end, a good leader on senior design project leads to a happy customer and a successful project. Do you notice some similarities between your answers and the answers from the faculty? Now, you have compiled your own list seen why the course faculty think good leadership is important. Now let's compare that to what Colin Powell, one of the greatest figures in recent US history, has to say about leadership. Colin Powell is one of the most widely respected American leaders and has held some of the highest leadership positions. These include being a four-star general in the US Army, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, which is the highest position in the Department of Defense, and being a national security advisor under President Ronald Reagan, and Secretary of State under George W. Bush. Through his 40 years in high leadership positions, he came up with the following nine tenets of successful leadership that apply directly to senior design. Lesson one, being responsible sometimes means pissing people off. Good leadership involves responsibility to the welfare of the group, which means that some people will get angry at your actions and decisions. It's inevitable if you're honorable. Trying to get everyone to like you is a sign of mediocrity. You'll avoid the tough decisions, you'll avoid confronting people who need to be confronted, and you'll avoid offering differential rewards based on differential performance because some people might get upset. Ironically, by procrastinating on the difficult choices, by trying not to get anyone mad, and by treating everyone equally regardless of their contributions, you'll simply ensure that the only people you wind up angering are the most creative and productive people on your team. Lesson two, never neglect details. Strategy equals execution. All the great ideas and visions in the world are worthless if they can't be implemented rapidly and efficiently. Good leaders delegate and empower, but pay attention to details every day. Bad leaders fancy themselves as progressive visionaries and think they are somehow above operational details. A good leader balances routine details and innovation to encourage people to innovate. Lesson three, you don't know what you can get away with until you try. You know the expression, it is easier to get forgiveness than permission. Well, it's true. Good leaders don't wait for official blessings to try things out. They are prudent, not reckless. 
but they also realize a fact of life in most organizations. If you ask enough people for permission, you'll inevitably come against someone who believes his job is to say no. So the moral is, don't ask. Less effective middle managers endorse the sentiment, if I haven't explicitly been told yes, I can't do it. Good managers believe, if I haven't explicitly been told no, I can. There's a world of difference between these two points of view. Lesson four, keep looking below surface appearances. Don't shrink from doing so just because you might not like what you find. If it ain't broke, don't fix it is the slogan of the complacent, the arrogant, or the scared. It's an excuse for inaction, a call to non-arms. It is a mindset that assumes or hopes that today's realities will continue tomorrow in a tidy, linear, and predictable fashion. This is pure fantasy. In this sort of culture, you won't find people who proactively take steps to solve problems as they emerge. Lesson five, your best asset are people. Only by attracting the best people will you accomplish great deeds. Good leaders create an environment where the best, brightest, and creative people can flourish and spend considerable time ensuring that their people are satisfied. Good leaders often imply the platinum rule, which is they treat people the way they want to be treated. Lesson six. The situation dictates which approach best accomplishes the team's mission. The primary lesson here is to not chase the latest management fat and to fit no stereotypes. Blindly following a particular management scheme generates rigidity. Good managers will use the correct management and planning tool for the situation. Lesson seven. Perpetual optimism is a force multiplier. The effect of a leader's enthusiasm and optimism is awesome. So is the impact of cynicism and pessimism. Leaders who whine and blame engender those same behaviors among their colleagues. Good leaders excite their people. They have a gung-ho attitude that says we can change things here, we can achieve awesome goals, and we can be the best. In Colin Powell's exact words, spare me the grim litany of the realist, give me the unrealistic aspirations of the optimist any day. Lesson eight. Great leaders are always great simplifiers and offer solutions that everybody can understand. Effective leaders understand the KISS principle, which stands for keep it simple stupid. Visions and priorities are clean and compelling, and leaders don't clutter or use buzzword-laden terminology. Their decisions are crisp and clear, not tentative and ambiguous. Good leaders also have a clarity of purpose, which results in the credibility of leadership and integrity for the group or the team. Lesson nine, have fun in leadership positions. Good leaders don't always run at breakneck speed and they spend time with their families and they take leave when they've earned it. Great leaders have balance in their life and have non-job priorities. Good leaders also facilitate social events or other fun events for their teams to hang out in a non-working setting. This results in a more cohesive team. In Colin Powell's words, spare me the grim workaholic or the pompous pretentious professional. I'll help them find a job with my competitor. Now for a final thought from Colin Powell, he states in one sentence, leadership is the art of accomplishing more than the science of management says is possible. That is a great sentiment, but how do we apply that to senior design? So looking at leadership in your senior design team, in the provided text box, please answer the following three questions. Please reflect on which of Colin Powell's tenets you will commit to bringing to your senior design team, how you will integrate Colin Powell's tenets into your senior design team, and how you plan to develop successful leadership skills in the future.
Let's check back in with our lesson objectives for this module. You should be able to explain why good leadership is crucial to success in senior design, list and explain the nine characteristics and practices of effective leaders, and create a plan to develop effective leadership characteristics in yourself. Thank you for completing this module and I hope it will help your senior design team succeed.